and I want to one day look like you at that age. And there's this emerging conversation around um, supplements and potential hormonal replacement and TRT. And I saw a really scary stat recently. It was out of the UK that said something like there's, there's over 10,000 teenagers getting on performance enhancing drugs at an early age. 10,000? Yeah. It's a big, it's a much bigger number than that. You think? Yeah. It's a much, 10,000? Yeah. That's in one small town. Damn. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's millions. But Damn. anyway, yeah. Well, my thought train is I think there is a case and there's a place in people's lives to use these kind of like marrying the scientific understanding of the importance like a testosterone replacement therapy for optimal aging and even not just muscle, right? Yep. Brain health yep. and mood and dopamine. And but also not jumping on them too quickly to your mm -hmm. point, like with the shoes, mask something that's a root cause like a 30 year old shouldn't necessarily need testosterone. If right. they go on it, what are they missing? Just like in the shoe analogy, you should maybe address the mobility as opposed to just jumping on the TRT. So I want to get your thoughts and ask you, you know, what's been your protocol like that with agent? I've spoke about it in the past, but where is where, where is the right time and place to think about something like getting endogenous support, uh, exogenous, exogenous support yeah. rather, yeah. for something like testosterone? You know, um, <clears throat> I, I do, uh, I'm, I'm aware of 30 something and 40 something people starting on, on TRT. You know, if you have uh, chronically low levels and it's gonna enhance your life in measurable ways, um, I would not be against it. Yeah. I waited until I was 60 to start. Yeah. Um, I didn't, I, I could have said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to be all natty mm -hmm. for the rest of my life. Um, that wasn't necessarily appealing to me. Yeah. I, I'm a, uh, genetically, I'm a, uh, uh, you know, a skinny guy mm -hmm. with, uh, like I, I should probably, I, I raced it 142 pounds. Right. I weigh 170 now. Yeah. And I'm same body fat, by the way. Right. Right. Um, so most of what I have is either, muscle, so a little bit of extra fat, and bone density. And bone density is, a, is big. a big part of that, right? So I wanna carry that extra five or six pounds, not 50 or 60, but five or six pounds of muscle uh, for as long as I can. So I, I've been doing TRT since I was 60. Um, you know, would I recommend it in younger men? Again, if, if, you're, if you test chronically low, yeah. sure. In your 20s, I, I, don't, I don't see a reason to do that now. Part of the, um, the, the, the problem with what we know about testosterone replacement is it, it, the industry has said, oh my God, it's, it's dangerous, it's horrible. Mm. No, it's not. It's, it's one of the most benign. I mean, there are millions of people doing steroids. Yeah. And not a lot of them are, are dying. Mm -hmm. And not a lot of them are really in, in, in horrible shape. So I think it's probably one of the biggest sort of experiments, mm. non, non control, uncontrolled experiments in a long time. So the idea that, um, I had a big problem with this in sports when I was mm. saying, you know, like, like you do the tour de France and you, you ride hard every day for 21 days, like hard, like, like life threatening hard every single day. And you got to get up every day yeah. and do it again. Um, and so a lot of the people who tested positive for testosterone in, in the tour, didn't have like huge off the charts levels. They had levels that were very low, but just enough to <laughs> let them survive yes. to get to the next day, right? So, so the idea that you would take an elite event like that and then somehow um, eliminate, uh, prevent these athletes from taking a, a powerful medicine, a medication that would let them recover is sort of ironic that you know, you're, you're, you're forcing this on them. But I don't know, I, it's, I'm, I'm kind of rambling here, but, I, but I'm not against taking yeah. TRT. It's kind of a, it's kind of a if it's controlled and you, and, you, and you test, you know, do blood tests for it, um, you know, I'm gonna continue to take it for the yeah. rest of my life. And I know, you know, some of my friends who take it and it's just, it's just a little bit of an edge. And, yes. you know, my wife's been doing hormone replacement since she was pre-menopause or menopause. Yeah. Yeah. And it changed her life. Yeah. So that's one of those little areas I'm like, okay, I can use we can use modern science here Bingo. in that regard, you know, without feeling like we're cheating at some game of life. Yeah. You know? Exactly. You're enhancing yeah. again. Like yeah. exactly like you said, pulling out more enjoyment because yeah. what it affects. Now if we talk about growth hormone, I'd say, yeah, I'm less less inclined to do yeah. growth hormone. Right. Yeah. So yeah. so there, you know, but I've done a lot of research into this. So We'll, um, you know, we'll see what that looks like in the future. The one yeah. thing about growth hormone that intrigues me is the, is the collagen uh, yes. building aspect of it. Yeah.
Hello friends, if you enjoyed that clip, then you can watch the entire thing by heading to this link over here, or you can find us wherever you find podcasts by searching Radical Health Radio. If there's value here, please hit that like button, let us know in a comment what your biggest takeaway was, and hit subscribe, support the show as we support you. We'll see you soon.